Hi, hi, good afternoon. Hi, Hope Hub. Hi, hi, hi. So this morning I came and I had my Hope strategy, right? And some of you, oh, yeah, no, look, Hope, Hope, Hope. Some of you uh, probably saw the video uh, where I talked about the Matrix and I was going on this random discussion on Neo and the Matrix and Morpheus and the Oracle and it was really dope. I was really going on and on and on. And of course, the video got cut off. Um, something about Wi-Fi or whatever, which I don't know where that message came from. And then my phone died. So I wasn't able to complete. But lo and behold, someone actually inboxed me, inbox, and messaged me and told me, hey, your video cut off. Could you come back and complete it? And I was like, ah, I am so perclept. I can't believe someone actually watched my video to the end and actually wants to know what in the world I was going to say. So here I am. I'm back. I have no idea what I was going to say. I was going on spirit, right? Because usually I don't have any notes or anything. So whatever it is that I, I was saying, I was on the roll, on a roll, on a roll, and everything just kind of went off completely disappeared, Hi. disappeared. But I'll try and kind of sort of... Um, maybe bring closure to that live video and just say essentially <laughs> this was the message and i know some of you probably are more matrix fans than i am um however what i do know about the matrix it's really about neo is the main character he is the chosen one. He is living a life that is in the matrix. He doesn't really understand why he's living this solitary life. He doesn't, he's not happy. He's not sleeping. He's not eating. And he's just living a, a begrudgingly life, right? He's just not happy. Um, and so he gets a message that says, hey, you know, maybe we may want to discover what is the matrix, right? And so he goes on a quest to find out what is this matrix and who is this chosen one that's supposed to come and rescue them or save the, the, the individuals who are in this movie, this beautiful movie. But my point with this, with those, with this whole thing was that all of us, all of us, um, in this world are here on assignment. All of us have, um, a deeper calling, a deeper purpose, a deeper plan for our lives. And for the most part, let me say maybe 90, 95% of people are not um, really actively believing that they're here for more. And they're not actively playing uh, more than a mundane role in their lives. So let me just speak for myself, right? So you're kind of just working every day, bringing home a paycheck, doing what it is that you're supposed to do in terms of your responsibility. But there's something inside of you that is saying you in your life are the one that you're chosen for something bigger than what it is that you are currently manifesting. I think within all of us, there is that calling and that thing that is saying, what is it that I'm here for? Because I have not really gotten into that vein. I haven't really pierced that vein or gotten into that flow of what it is that I'm supposed to be doing. And once you actually scratch the surface of what it is that you maybe should have, could have be doing, then that thing, if you don't follow through on it, which is your calling, your assignment, your purpose, it won't let you go. It won't let you sleep. And so you're constantly looking for confirmation, looking for validation, looking for someone to tell you this is what you should be doing. You are the one. This is your purpose. This is your plan. This is your blueprint. This is your identity, right? But really, I think innate in all of us, we know what we, that there's something more that, that we should be doing. And essentially, that was my idea around bringing up this topic and um, my hope strategy for you guys this morning was to start thinking of your minds in a new and fresh manner. What does that mean? Start thinking about hope as a positive imagination. Hope as something that paints a picture in your mind of the positive things that could potentially 
happen in your life. And so that's why I was bringing this idea of the projector, the projector reel, right? So when you go to the movies, for example, or um, when you watch those old black and white movies where they're kind of cranking something in the back and then the picture um, unfolds on a projector up front, right? You, um, and usually these old movies would be shown in a park and all of a sudden you're seeing Greta Garbo, you're, you're seeing Gone with the Wind, this beautiful historical romantic movie. You're seeing Scarlett O'Hara and she's talking to Ashley and she's in love with him and, and he's married to his cousin apparently. Um, <laughs> so he was, she was, he was actually married. Yeah, he, anyway, he was married to a cousin, I believe. And she was pining for him all the days of, for, for the most part, the whole movie, she's pining for this man. And in the meantime, she marries this other man who is desperately in love with her, Red Butler. And it's not until um, Ashley's wife dies and she then realizes that Ashley never loved her and he never could have loved her and that maybe she only loved him because he wasn't available or whatever it is that she finally realizes that she is, she should have loved Red Butler, right? And then by then, Red no longer wants her. Anyway, so I'm going off on a tangent, but that's a historical romance and drama. And for some of us, our lives are kind of sort of like that. You know, it's you, maybe you're that hopeless romantic. You're that person who's constantly searching for love and love is right in front of you. But the love that is available to you, you don't want it. And meanwhile, you're chasing all these other things that are not available to you. And then you know, that's how your tale ends. The picture of your life ends, right? Or another film that I absolutely love is The Color Purple. So, for example, in that movie, the, the scenery, the dramatics of that movie are, are very sad. You know, there's a lot of trauma in that movie for Miss Seeley. As Seeley, as she grows up, she's traumatized as a child. She ends up living a life where she doesn't believe in herself, in her own value. She's writing all these letters to God. She doesn't even sign her own name because she doesn't doesn't truly uh, believe that she's even valuable enough to sign off on her own letters to God about her life. And she's living this life of why me, why me? And truly, truly, there's a lot of trauma that's gone on in her life. But it's not until someone in her life shows up who shows her that you can be strong. It's up to you to determine how you want to live your life. You have lived a life of challenges, of adversity, of trauma, but you are beautiful. You are strong. You are able. You can um, overcome all these challenges. You can be, um, a, you can move past this relationship. You can um, do something about uh, the relationship in front of you and get rid of this man that is in your life. You have the power within you. You've always had the power. And so that's, that's another movie. So is that you in your life where you have gone through a lot of challenges, adversity and trauma in childhood or as an adult, and you're thinking, woe is me. I have self-esteem issues. I don't believe I'm beautiful. I don't believe I'm capable. I'm not, I don't believe I'm able, but you know, in this day and age, the Hope Hub and, and Faith here on the Hope Hub is telling you, you know what? You're better than your circumstances. You're better than the picture that's in front of you. You are the author of your own life. You are the creator of your own life. You are responsible for the things and the circumstances around you. And so it is up to you. The onus is on you to make the change, to change the real that's playing in your life, to... um to strengthen your brain, your mind, which is a muscle in order for you to get rid of the circumstances and the reality that's being projected by what is in your mind. Hope paints a picture. And so hope paints, like with these movies that I just described, a positive picture of what your life should be. So you cling on to that anchor that is hope and you start to believe that life could be beautiful. Life could be lovely. Life could be victorious. You could be exactly what it is that you want to be because God tells us that we have a powerful mind. We have a powerful imagination and hope, um, is, is part, is part of who we were created or, um, uh, ordained with. We are ordained with that power to hope, right? Faith is the substance of the things hoped for. We as creators are 
always in hoping mode. We're supposed to be hoping and having a positive imagination of what our future should be. So I think that's what my, my strategy was in talking about Morpheus, the Oracle and Neo and the Matrix and, and all of that, that he, for, lo for the longest time in his narrative, all these individuals kept telling him, um, I think he, they were telling him you're the chosen one or they're telling him in cryptic ways that he has abilities, he has potential, he could be the chosen one. And so in your life, Think about all the people, maybe your parents, maybe your sisters, your siblings, your friends who are constantly telling you, you have a gift in this area. You have a strength in this area. Have you ever considered doing ABC? Have you ever considered um, starting a business? You, you bake the meanest uh, cakes in the world. I haven't eaten a cookie better than the one you, you bake. It's just scrumptious or whatever it is that is your gifting. You're a master storyteller. You're a master, a master of ceremony. You're a, you're a master singer. You know, you should, you should really look into acting. You should really look into painting. You draw so well. You, you know, all these things over your life that people have noticed those little, little giftings in you, but you're being told in your life, this is who you are. You're a leader. You're this, you're that. But then yet, you don't believe it for yourself. So what I'm asking you to do today is look at yourself clear in the mirror and start to affirm those things that you see in front of you. And, start, and if you don't see them, if you're having self-worth issues or self-esteem issues or where you think this is not me, write them down, speak them to yourself, Sit down, lay down, close your eyes and start having a positive imagination about those things that you want in your life because hope is a positive imagination. I think that's the only way I can I can define it. I mean, there's a lot of ways to define hope, but it's really this idea that as human beings, we have the power to imagine and that's what separates us from animals, right? I can look at you, I can, as I speak to you right now, I can tell you, imagine a red apple. Imagine now that red apple is now turning green. And you can see it. That's the picture that is in your mind. You, can, you have the ability to change pictures in your mind, right? That's imagination. Another way to think about imagination is I can tell you right now, close your eyes and think about your house and tell me how many doors do you have in your house? And basically in your imagination, you don't have to count, you know, go and count the doors physically in your house. All you have to do is in your imagination, see yourself walking and counting the doors around in your house. And then coming back and saying, Faith, I have 10 doors in my house. You didn't walk around and count the doors. Same as windows. We have that ability to imagine. If I tell you how many windows do you have in your house, you can tell me. If I come to your house and I say, where is the nearest um, grocery store? You don't need to give me a map. All you have to do is tell me you go right. And this is all in your imagination. You leave my driveway, turn left at the stop sign, turn right by the school, go down to the next stop sign, go down to the next light, turn right on Route 13, keep driving down for two miles. All this is in, in your imagination. And that's what we have the ability to do as human beings is imagine these things which are already in our reality. But the Bible says right? And we know for a fact, if you look at people's biographies, that the things they accomplished, they saw in their minds years before they actually came into fruition. They saw them in their imagination. They saw them spiritually. They saw them in their mind's eye. And so today, as you go out into your world, Try and just take a detour out of the matrix for a moment and start looking at your life clearly and say to yourself, everything, if truly what the whole pub is saying today is that everything that is in my life, in my reality, is actually my doing. 
it's a culmination of all the things that I, all the choices, all the things that I dreamt up, right, within reason. Then it goes to speak that, it goes to show that, or uh, yeah, it goes to show that I can positively imagine my future and the things that I desire, my hopes and my dreams. And I can close my eyes and imagine those things and meditate on them and they can come to fruition. I remember speak, uh, listening to um, a pastor, Dr. Pastor Andrew Womack, and he was talking about a man that he spoke to in Norway that was a preacher who had healed many people who were on wheelchairs, people who were blind, um, you know, people who um, had had all these, you know, diagnoses. And, and you know, today in this day and age, the, the types of healings and the revivals and the things that were happening, um, kind of like what was happening in the day of Jesus, um, have really diminished. It's not a whole lot of pastors and evangelists that are able to heal and actually you see people being raised from the dead or you see people walking, standing up from their wheelchairs and the deaf and the blind being healed and all of that. All those things that were miraculous, it's almost like the, that day and age has gone by or very few people have documented those things happening. And so he was talking to one such pastor in Norway who had been covered by the news because he was actually doing these things. And he asked him, how are you able to do these things? And he said, look, I saw myself doing those things. I had a vision. I, I actually sat down and I, I saw myself doing these things, um, evangelizing to crowds of thousands and healing all these people way before it actually happened. And so in the fullness of time, it happened. But those things were things that he had seen so clearly in his mind. And at some point, because he kept meditating and meditating and just knowing, God, I know this is what I have, you have for me. I know that you have called me to heal the blind and, and perform miracles. And so at some point, then that came to fruition. Same for T.D. Jakes. T.D. Jakes knew he was going to be a bishop and a pastor to the nations years and years before that happened. In West Virginia, he had a congregation of 100, but he knew that God had called him for more. And maybe there was a time where he was not able to speak that vision because people would ridicule him and look at him and say, come on now, all these people that you have here, you brought them to the church. You're basically giving people rides to this little church, right? And you have really elderly people. Majority of them are your family members. Uh, majority of them don't even understand what it is you're preaching. Wh whatever people were ridiculing him and talking to him about. But at the end of the day, every single um, issue or circumstance or challenge or disease or diagnosis that he had in that congregation, it was like a multiplier effect that he ended up having basically the same issues and challenges, but now serving what? Thousands. And then with women, thou would lose hundreds of thousands. But he was in an incubator space where he was able to preach and do all the things that he needed in order to, um, develop his gift in order for him to prepare for what God had called him to become, right? So sometimes you have to look at um, yourself and maybe say to yourself, okay, I understand this is where I am. I'm in a small space. I understand that my gift, I do have a gift, but I'm not where I want to be. But continue to hold on to what God has called you to do. If he's called you to be uh, speak to the nations to have a worldwide ministry. He's saying, you know, you're you're going to be such and such. Do not be the person that will limit God and the vision that He has for you. Let other people limit and ridicule you, but do not let that come out of your mind. I'd rather you just keep it to yourself and continue to affirm within yourself. Speak to yourself. Encourage yourself in the Lord, like David did, but do not give up on yourself. Let other people be the limiter. Because I think 
there's a verse in the Bible that says um, they limited the Holy One or they limited God. So I'm not sure in, in what context, but God even understands that people, you can be the one that limits him. So dream big, dream big, dream huge. Because if you do, you know, at least you're not limiting God because God can only work with what it is that you're able to believe, right? The faith that you have, he recognizes faith and he validates faith and he co-creates with you based on your faith. So I don't know if that helps. I went on and on and on, but I just want to say thank you for those of you who watch me. Thank you for those of you who support the Hope Hub. I really appreciate it, especially when someone comes out and says, hey, you didn't finish your thought. I really wanted to hear the rest of your live video. But why don't you all like my videos? Why don't you all like my videos? I really would appreciate if you all share and like my video because let me tell you, these Facebook streets, there's a lot of negativity. There's a lot of people who need to hear hope on a daily basis. And so do not keep me hidden. Do not keep me a secret. Like, follow, share my videos. Like, because when you like it, then Facebook says, hey, people are liking her videos. I think we should share them on this public space and let people also know that she exists, know that this space exists. Because even in this small place, even if followers and likers are, are coming in like, uh, paint uh, drying on a wall, <laughs> whatever it is, like, or dripping, drip, 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 one, 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 one. I still believe that God has me here for a reason. And I know that God is the God of suddenly, and God is the God of the 360 degree turn. And God has me serving those of you who, he, who are here listening. But I also know that all of you can be beneficial in helping me get to the next level and helping this platform grow and get to the next level. So God bless you all, all of you like my video. <laughs> Take care. Happy. What is today? Tuesday. God bless you. Bye-bye.